How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, the WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or available on the Spreaker app on all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, this episode will be posted on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well by searching No Holds Barred. WP. Be sure to head over to our YouTube and Spreaker channel as well and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and now let's get right to the news. That's right. We kept that news headline music. So that's how I'm going to do it from now on. Corporate Cap really wanted me to keep it in there, so that's how we're going to play it in. But welcome to the newly revamped Sunday Night Heat. Usually in the past, we would do like special uh, spotlight episodes, which we turned that into the spotlight. It's its own show. And we would usually do like predictions and uh, reviews. We're not doing that anymore in the Sunday Night Heat. Sunday Heat will always be on Sundays, obviously, and it'll always be surrounding a news and rumor. So basically the week roundup of all the news and rumors from the week. Um, so it'll solely be that. And just that kind of show every Sunday, I'll try to do it live. Eventually, I want it to go to YouTube Live only. So I want to do something a little bit different. Um, it won't be on Spreaker. It'll be posted on Spreaker after. It'll be, so it'll be posted on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher after the YouTube Live is done. But I want to transition this to YouTube Live every Sunday. So eventually, I'm, I'm hoping to do it by next week and get it all set up by next week. But uh, Sunday, he will be a YouTube Live exclusive, uh, hopefully going forward. Um, we will be taking Skype calls. Uh, during that as well not this week uh next starting next week and we'll talk about news we want to call in you know some news you want to call in talk to me about or we can talk about the news that i have at hand here but i will be taking skype calls during the sunday night heat episodes as well so if you guys want to call in starting next week on skype add us no holds barred du- no holds barred wrestling podcast on skype and then i'll add you to the contact list and i'll let you call into the show uh during we have the sunday night heat so that's all out of the way. Let's get right into the news of what I have news for today. We got a lot of articles today, so I can get over them. Um, we got news on women being added to the Total Divas show. Yes, I'm sure a lot of you have heard so far. It was reported several weeks ago that Eva Marie would be leaving not only Dare to Be, but Total Divas when her contract expires. It was also rumored that female su- su- uh, female superstars in the Dare to Be locker room were being interviewed to take her spot on the show. It looks like WWE has not found out, or has found two replacements uh, for the even. Uh, I guess the the missing uh, Eva Marie. And Craig's in the chat right now on speaker. How's it going, Greg? Uh, so it looks like WWE's found two replacements, according to the report from Ryan Stanton of Pro Wrestling Sheet. Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss will be joining the cast of Total Divas. Filming is set to begin for the seventh season for in a few weeks from now. In a recent interview with CBS Local Sports, Naomi revealed that she would be returning to the main cast of the show as well. But with all these additions, there has been some consequences. These consequences appear to be no more than Dean Ambrose and Renee Young. So they will not be going forward with the Total Diva show. So Renee Young and Dean Ambrose are coming off the show. And they're adding Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss, and Naomi is coming back to the Total Diva show. I don't know if you guys care out there. If you guys do care about Total Divas and you watch it religiously or regularly... That's the news for you if you want your Total Divas news. I don't really watch it. I used to watch it more when Paige was on it because, you know, obviously Paige is my girl and she's my favorite uh, woman on the Dirty Be roster. Um, but I just, you know, I can't get into it. I'm not into those types of shows. It's not me. It was good for a while and just got too, ugh, you know what I mean? Uh, too cringe, if I can put it that way. Um, but yeah, uh, next bit of news. Plans for Lana going forward on SmackDown Live. So speaking of the women on the roster. Fans of the SmackDown Live Ross or fans of SmackDown Live this week got a bit of a surprise, as not only did Lana make her debut, she also was granted a SmackDown Live Women's Championship opportunity. She will face Naomi at the upcoming Money in the Bank pay per view. Here's some updates on Lana and the plans for her on SmackDown Live. According to the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Lana was originally supposed to work as a heel due to her crowd reaction on Tuesday. The Observer notes that it is likely that she'll become a babyface now moving forward. 
Lana received one of the biggest reactions on the show this week, and I do remember that. She did get uh, a good cheer. I think it's just because people haven't seen Lana in a while. I think it's just going to get stale and go back to heel, I mean, me personally. But uh, let's see what else this article has to say. It's also noted that Lana will essentially be working the role that was originally slotted for Eva Marie on SmackDown Live. Great. Let's hope Lana can do it better. Uh, as noted prior, Eva will not be returning to the WWE, and both sides are waiting on her contract to expire. Eva was featured heavily on SmackDown Live until she violated the wellness policy several months ago. It will certainly be interesting to see what happens with Lana. Her SmackDown Live in-ring debut will be at the pay-per-view title match. So now, now we're not even going to get a, a pre-match that me and Corporate Cappy wanted before Money in the Bank. So we're getting right into her match already at uh, the pay-per-view. So that's that's not really... I really want her to have a match beforehand. Maybe they change their mind in this, this coming uh, Tuesday on SmackDown. She has one, but we'll see. Uh, the rest of this article says her only other previous match came at WrestleMania 32. Uh, not a bad start, I guess you can say, to the main roster. Oh my god, I can't believe I said that in an article. Um, not a bad start, more like a rewarded start. Like, no one, a lot, a lot of people can say they, they have their uh, championship opportunities so early uh, on their debut. I know, uh, kind of a biased thing to say now with me because Paige's first uh, roster match was for the title and she won it, but... Anyways, uh, we'll see what happens with Lana. Uh, I don't think it's the right move to turn her babyface. I think eventually she will get a heel reaction. I think they're, they're, if she's trying to do the whole Eva Marie gimmick thing, that's going to get stale and people are going to hate it. So, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, next news. Inside scoop on John Cena's return feud and storyline. It was advertised this week on SmackDown Live that John Cena will be returning to the WWE on July 4th. Cena has been absent from the Dirty Beast since WrestleMania 33, where him and Nikki Bella defeated Miz and Maurice in their mixed tag match, and Cena proposed to Nikki Bella. With Cena set to return in a few weeks, we can start asking who he will be feuding with. The rumor mill currently suggests that Cena will be heading straight back into the Dirty Beast title picture when he returns. His opponent will, according to the rumors, be none other than Jinder Mahal, who is currently working as a pro-India anti-american gimmick as a wwe champion with cena returning on the 4th of july it seems obvious that we are destined to see gender interrupted by cena at the bash and the bash the united states for some easy heat um i kind of see that happening uh i think if what i think is starting to play out is a good way to happen i'm hoping it happens that way i think cena is going to come back He's going to win the title at uh, Great American... Or not Great American Bash. <laughs> God. <laughs> He's going to win the title at Battleground for SmackDown in July. And that's probably going to set up a Nakamura style... Or Nakamura John Cena WWE title match at SummerSlam. That'll be another big headline match going into SummerSlam. And they, you, know, you know WWE's trying to make SummerSlam like a big big deal. Like almost as big as WrestleMania. So that I mean that's a great match to add to a card like that to make it as big. Um... But yeah, I I actually like this uh, return feud for John Cena. Uh, the rest of the article says the idea between Jinder Mahal and John Cena feud will be to legitimize Jinder's title reign in India, successfully defending the WWE title against Randy Orton, and John Cena will only help WWE's expansion into the country. So and maybe they're going that way. Maybe they're going to have Jinder Mahal beat John Cena at Battleground um, since they're not going to India anymore in September. This is probably another way to help boost the uh, the Indian uh, push. That everybody's trying to do right now, but uh, if they were to do it smart, I, I mean, you can you do it in a way where Jinder is not completely buried. You can have Cena come back and win the title. Maybe someone interferes and starts a feud with Jinder going into SummerSlam, and Cena then wins the title that way. I think that we should go that direction. They shouldn't have Jinder Mahal beat John Cena unless their current plans is for John Cena to put over Jinder Mahal. But we'll see what happens when that time comes. But I actually love this new feud coming into uh, John Cena's. Uh, John Cena's future coming into July 4th, so we'll see what happens with that. Next bit of news, WWE plans for 205 Live. So going forward with 205 Live. 205 Live made its debut on November 29th, 2016. The show airs after SmackDown Live features talents that are in the WWE Cruiserweights division. There have been rumors for the past few months that the show isn't doing great numbers on the Dirty Network. Well, gee, I wonder why. We rant about it every single week on uh, the Lowdown Show. 
it needs to be moved to Wednesday nights after or before NXT, and you can have it for an hour and have it at full sale. They'll appreciate the cruiserweights. You just they don't know how. The Dirty just doesn't know what they're doing. So let, let's listen to what Dirty has planned for them to think that this is going to grow the division. This is funny. Listen to this. There have been some solid matches on the show, but it appears that if some Dirty fans haven't given it a chance or have been turned off by the show at some point. According to the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, WWE is discussing ways to improve viewership for the show. So here comes the one idea, the great idea that WWE has. One of the ideas is, that is being talked about is using more main roster females on the show. We saw this recently with Sasha Banks teaming with Rich Swan. They feuded with Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. Fox has been appearing regularly on the show. Okay, wrong. That will not bring more viewers to the show, for one. That it, look what you've done with the main roster women on the show. You've done completely cringe shit. You, 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 you chose Rich Juan, which was the wrong choice at the pay-per-view. It should have been Cedric Alexander. I think that would have been a better choice. But to add more women to the... Are you kidding me? How are you supposed to promote a cruiserweight division by adding main roster females? That makes literally zero sense in my books. I think it'll bring zero credibility to it. And I think that it's the worst idea I've ever heard. Yeah, I don't understand why they don't see what they actually need to do, and it's to move to Wednesday nights. I don't understand. Uh, the rest of the article says, It also appears that WWE is trying to mix in some of their male talents on the show as well. Titus O'Neil appears on the week's, this week's episode to try to recruit Tozawa to the Titus right now. I think that's a little bit of a good idea. I think you should include some main roster superstars on 205 Live, guys that should be probably in your 205 Live division, like we've said before, like Sin Cara, uh, Kalisto, um, if, I mean, it, it, he's too big of a superstar, but Finn Balor would be perfect for the 205 Live division, I think. But you got so many people, and I, I thought Aleister Black was supposed to make a, his debut for them too, I don't know what's going on with him, um, but I kind of like uh, the intertwining of the male superstar, I don't think the female superstars will bring a draw, a big of a draw, as much as how good they are, um, I just feel like if they're going to bring main event women, ro- main event roster women into the 205 Live, they're not going to use them properly. I think they use uh, the male superstars uh, properly more. That's just my opinion. Um, but those are the the plans for WWE to make 205 Live relevant. And I think they're completely garbage. They need to stop that. You need to really just sit back and think, okay, where are we going to get the best crowd? Where are we going to get the good reactions? Where are we going to get people to tune in more? You're going to get people to tune in more to NXT now if you put 205 like right after NXT or right before, man. you got to put it on Wednesday nights. Each show is going to be an hour. There you go. you got three nights of wrestling. People don't mind that. And then you get more network draws because SmackDown and, and Raw are on cable television, whether as network or uh, whether as NXT and 205 Live are on the network. So you're going to get more network subscriptions that way too if you make 205 Live uh, network exclusive and you kind of have a showcase match on Raw and SmackDown, uh, like maybe one showcase match or one showcase feud each on each show. I think that's the way to do it, but who knows? If Dirty thinks that's the way to do it, man, we're just going to see how cringe it ends up and have to go with the flow, man. Not much we can do with that. Um, some more news here. I just lost my notes. <laughs> What did I do with them? Ah, oh, there we go. I thought I lost them for a second. Alright. So, next bit of news. Plans for the Universal title going forward. Yes, the, the Universal title that's making its return to Monday Night Raw this week. Samoa Joe was able to defeat Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins at Extreme Rules. With the win, Joe became the number one contender for the Universal Championship, earning himself a match against Brock Lesnar. Many fans are excited about the dream match between Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire. Where are the plans for after the event? According to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, the plan is for the match between Joe and Lesnar to be a one-off. Yes, it is exactly what we thought it was going to come to fruition, and that is going to be a one-off match, sadly. Um... After Joe, Meltzer says Brock will defend the Universal title against Braun Strowman at SummerSlam. There have been a ton of rumors surrounding Strowman, but it seems clear that he will make his return much sooner than the sixth month that Derby is saying he could miss. The long-term goal, as mentioned before, will be... (laughs) Oh, God. Will be for Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the title at WrestleMania 34. In between Strowman and Reigns, it is possible that we could see Finn Balor and Seth Rollins both have matches against Brock for the title leading up to that. Oh my god, can I please not do this? Can I please not just have Strowman, Finn Balor, and Bray Wyatt try to run through Lesnar and Lesnar carry the title all the way across to uh, (laughs) 
to WrestleMania and then not lose a title or just have one-off matches. That's just the worst idea. That brings no prestige to the title. It's going to make it in a shittier case than it already is and been missing for three months. They need to sit back and really revamp this whole future plans for the Universal title, man. This is terrible. I think what I would do um, in this case is you have Samoa Joe win. And beat Brock Lesnar. You want to make... You, they're trying to make Samoa Joe this monster. Like this beast. You already tell they're starting uh, th- with this past uh, episode of Raw. If you're going to make him this beast. Make him win the title. At Great Balls of Fire. Make him down the beast. Make people question. what, what Man. Like Brock Lesnar just got owned by Samoa Joe and Goldberg in the same year. Like what's going on with Brock Lesnar? Maybe even have uh, Lesnar not look that weak. And have Strowman interfere. In that match. And cost Lesnar. Maybe you can still have a Brock Lesnar versus Strowman match. I don't know. It's just. To me. It's, to burying Samoa Joe in a one-off match. Like you make him look so strong. And for him to lose at Great Balls of Fire. Whether it's Strowman interfering on Lesnar. And, and, and like costing Samoa Joe. I don't know. It's just. To me that's just. Poor Samoa Joe. Like the guy's supposed to be built up as a beast. And you're just going to one-off him like that. He's the wrong guy to one-off. They were going to do this one-off thing. It should have been Seth Rollins. Or it should have been Finn Balor. Something like that. I don't, I think Samoa Joe is not the type of guy to do a one-off match with. I think it's just the worst idea. But I guess this is WWE's long-term goals. And they're awful. That's why Raw sucks. I mean, they wonder why Raw like is terrible. And people are complaining so much about Raw's universal title picture. Because they go ahead with plans like this. That are complete garbage. Seriously, I, I don't understand how anyone can get behind this. Um, but move on. Next bit of news. News on why TJP <laughs> changed his name. And this is hilarious. So get ready to sit back and listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, quite the knee slapper. And it, it probably, if you're guessing something in your mind right now onto as why uh, TJP actually changed his name, you're probably right. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is why. The story behind TJP's name change does indeed have to do, and you guessed it, with Vince McMahon. According to Brian Alvarez of The Brian and Vinny Show, Vince McMahon wanted to change TJ Perkins to TJP because of a bad experience at the restaurant named Perkins. Seriously, Vince? Vince McMahon hates the place so much that his thought process is that right now, if people hear the name Perkins they will think of the restaurant that Vince McMahon hates. And Vince does not want to hear it anymore. So that is the reason why he changed TJ Perkins to TJP. Because he hates the restaurant Perkins. Are you fucking kidding me? Seriously? You changed Perkins to TJP because of your hate of a wrestler. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Um, of a restaurant, sorry. So you're going to punish a wrestler's name. For hating a restaurant. That makes sense. Hi, Michael Chow in the chat. How's it going? Unbelievable. Can you believe that, Michael Chow? Your, your boy, TJP. That's why his name gets changed. Because Vince McMahon had a bad experience at a restaurant called Perkins. <laughs> and he thinks that when people hear TJ Perkins, they're only going to think of the restaurant. They're not going to think of the wrestler. I have never thought of the restaurant once since hearing TJ Perkins. Not, only, not until now. Not until, not until I read this article. But I still wouldn't have thought about it going forward. This is ret- this is ridiculous. That's why he changed it. I don't know, Michael Chuff, if you like TJP instead of TJ Perkins. But to me, I thought, uh, again, it goes back to why Vince just drops names and changes names, man. He just, he's got, he's so senile. And I just don't understand. Oh, man. Uh, I, Michael Chuff, it's there's a restaurant up here in Canada with Perkins. I think there's a few places in the States. Not all, all everywhere in America. But it's like a, it's like a breakfast restaurant, basically. And he had, I guess he, Vince had a, uh, a bad experience. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we're going to move on from that. And uh, I got some news here about Sister Abigail. And uh, I think Sister Abigail has been exposed. I think we have the, uh, the inside scoop on who Sister Abigail is. Uh, Kevin Eck was recently a guest on the PW Torch live cast hosted by Wade Keller. Eck is a former WWE writer and worked for the company for a few years now. Eck was asked if fans will ever see the Sister Abigail character on WWE television. We, cons- we constantly hear Bray Wyatt reference Abigail in his promos, and it is, of course, the name of his finishing move. Based on his interactions with Wyatt, 
Eck doesn't feel like the character will ever be seen on WWE television. He also gives some insight into the origin of the character. Here's what he said. Bray Wyatt was apparently a young man and Sister Abigail was a old black woman in a, I, in what she believes, the swamp of Louisiana who he had some supernatural powers. And you know, the history of voodoo and such in New Orleans. I believe she took him under his wing and uh, kind of taught him the secrets of what she knows and of the dark arts and things like that. So that is apparently the Sister Abigail character according to Kevin Eck. Whether we see something like that under intelligent is yet to be seen. Maybe in the future WWE changes their minds and we finally see it. But who knows? Um, that's interesting. I, th I totally thought Sister Abigail would be at least like a younger, maybe the same age as Bray Wyatt. Uh, like a woman from the performance center and they would change her into sister Abigail, kind of like Nikki Cross, like a crazy person. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, but uh, Michael Chow in the chat, based off that Sasha Banks gets to get a huge push because Vince likes Banks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen that so far. <laughs> well, that's funny. Um, but yeah, sister Abigail, crazy. Um, I honestly thought we would see like I thought we would see it sooner by now, but it kind of looks like we're never gonna see Sister Abigail. I mean, they don't even know what they're doing with Bray Wyatt. The guy they just bury the guy every goddamn week, so I don't know. Um, so sorry for you just tuning in now, Michael Child. This is the last bit of news, so you have to go back and listen to the rest. Last bit of news: Rumor Killer on Dalton Castle. For all y'all that don't know who Dalton Castle is, a huge talent in Ring of Honor right now. That is rumors of signing with WWE. So here's what the article says. There was rumors circulating a few weeks ago that Derby had some big interest in the signing of Ring of Honor star Dalton Castle. Castle's contract was coming to an end, and it is rumored that Derby would be making a big offer to sign him. It is noted that Ring of Honor wanted to re-sign Castle. They would need to put together a great offer to do so. It looks like that is going... It looks like... Oh, I read that wrong. It looks like that is the case. According to the new report from Derby, or PW Insider, Castle is not going to WWE. According to the report, Castle signed a new contract with Ring of Honor within the past several days and will be sticking around with the company. Great news for fans of Ring of Honor. Not so great news for fans of Derby that wanted to see him come to NXT or the Derby main roster. There's still no word yet on the status of Adam Cole either, another big free agent that is rumored to sign with the WWE. So that is interesting. So Dalton Castle, I actually went and watched a couple of his matches on YouTube. He, that guy is insane, man. If Darby ever signed him in the future, he'd definitely be, if he got pushed on NXT, he'd definitely be a top star in NXT 100%. I can see him being a top star in NXT. That is uh, incredible, the guy. What, what the guy can do is, is insane. So if you haven't watched yet, go on YouTube and check out uh, some of Dalton Castle's work. As for Adam Cole, I hope I think he'll eventually sign. I think there's just uh, some stuff he probably wants to do. Adam Cole is an exceptional piece of talent and one of the Bullet Club members. They can definitely do something with uh, the club or something like that in the future. But I think if he ever came to Derby, Adam Cole would be straight to NXT and need to fill that uh, main roster uh, spot. But uh, that's going to do it for the Sunday Heat, guys. This is the, the newly revamped Sunday Night Heat for you guys just tuning in now. It's solely going to be a Darby News and Rumor Show every Sunday. Eventually, this will not be on Spreaker Live. It'll be on YouTube Live going forward. I'm going to hopefully do it by next uh, Sunday and get it only on a YouTube Live exclusive. And then after, it'll be posted on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. So starting next week, guys, it'll be on YouTube Live. So it'll be YouTube Live exclusive. There's also a chat in there, so we can still chat with each other and all that stuff. Um... Next week, starting next week on the Sunday Heat, we'll also be taking in Skype calls. If you guys have any news and rumors that I didn't read, I'll take in some Skype calls and we can talk about those or we can talk about some of the news and rumors um, that I've said in this show. So stay tuned next week and uh, be sure if you haven't added us on Skype already, No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast, search for it on Skype. I'll add you to the contact list and you'll be able to call in on the live shows of the Sunday Night Heat. As for that, I think that's going to do it. I'm pretty sure it was only eight articles today. Yeah, only eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, only eight articles. So that is going to do it and wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat, ladies and gentlemen, on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. This was done live right here on Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or available on the Spreaker app for all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, this episode will be posted on Spreaker, our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching Nola's Bar WP. Be sure to head over to our YouTube and Spreaker channel as well to give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, 
self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you guys next time.